Good morning, church family. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Come on, Nazarene, lift your hands in worship. We come to pray. We come to adore him. We come to worship and bow down before him. Free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free, yeah. Free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free, Lord, I'm free. Come on, say, free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship, Lord,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Today's scripture comes to us from 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting in verse 45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom, I have, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by the sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. That was 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 through 47. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father... It's been a, a, a rough 2020, but you, oh great God, wonderful God, awesome God, has brought us through, Lord. And for that, we truly thank you, Lord. We thank you for the mercy you have shown us. We thank you for the favor you have shown us. We thank you for all that you have brought us through. You have brought us through racial tension. You have brought us through a pandemic. And though we're not completely through, we know the victory is the Lord's. We know the battle is the Lord. And so we declare to you today, as your church, as your bride, that we are continuing to lean on you. We are continually to put our trust in you. We are continually putting our hope in you, Lord, for without you, we are nothing. Without your grace, we would not have made it this far. Without your mercy, we have not, would not have made it this far. And we truly thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we pray today that you anoint this man of God, that you, you, you bless his house, that you, you bless his family, and you bless the word as he brings it forth, Lord. We pray that you anoint this shepherd and shepherds all across the land, Lord, because people need a word from you, and everybody don't know of your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. And we just want them to know you, Lord, through the messengers of your word. We pray for a blessed service. We pray for a blessed week and that you will show favor to your saints. As you have been doing all this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God and amen. We want to say good morning to everybody, to those of you who are, who are viewing this morning. We want to welcome you to, to our live Sunday morning broadcast here at the Nazarene Baptist Church of Evansville, Indiana, where our pastor is Reverend Larry A. Rasco Sr. And we say to God be the glory for all the things he has done. Amen. Um, this morning we hope that you have, have done as we do each week. We hope that you are liking and sharing and commenting on this morning's worship service. Please send in your prayer requests if you have any, any prayer requests we want to know. We want to know how to pray for you. We want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. So please send in your prayer requests. So you all, I don't know if you all have noticed, but I don't know what has happened, but pastor's been sharp these last, these last few months saying, I don't know. I don't know if he done got filled with the Holy Ghost or what, but he's sure been sharp. <laughs> he go, 
he got a he got a ball with my name on it. He said anytime I say something crazy, he's gonna throw this ball at me. But he showed me. I don't know if it's old age that's making him. <laughs> But we thank God for our pastor. And after, after the, the worship team has come to do one more song, we will hear a word from God through our pastor, Pastor Larry Rasco. Amen. Amen.
why don't you put your hands together and thank God for the praise team and the band we appreciate we appreciate each and every one who worked so hard to help us continue to spread and share and share the gospel uh, good to see you today good to see you today good to see you today I tell people that technically we're not officially open however uh, if you want to stop by we can accommodate you because we are we got to practice you know before we come back and y'all are doing a real good job today uh, the team uh, Ed and Shalante and the entire team have done an amazing job getting everything marked. I hope that you've seen uh, the sanitizing stations. Uh, know that, you know, we some hugging people. Now I know, I know that's just, that's going to be the last thing we conquer because I'm telling you, we some hugging, we some hugging people. So to tell us to get, to stay six feet away and can't hug y'all y'all better hurry, hurry up and get y'all's get y'all shots because when we when i get past that two weeks and y'all got your shots i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a hugging fool hey amen amen i uh, uh yeah but we're not through this but we are we are on our we're on our way do want to take a moment and say a big thank you for a marvelous and wonderful uh, time of encouragement last week and for all of your cards that are still coming in just to say pastor we appreciate you and encourage you for that I just I can't can't help but say thank you you feel my heart and uh, it makes me want to sing I feel like I feel like going on Amen. Darlene, we've been praying for you this week. There's a word from the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Reverend Fisher, thank you so much for sharing that text. That's part of what I'm going to be preaching from. I'm going to read the 25th verse and then I'm going to drop down a few more verses. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 7, 17. Coming from the NIV version, the 25th verse says, now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel and the king will give great wealth to the man who kills him, who will also give his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Let me go down to the 32nd verse as David is talking to Saul, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you're not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Amen. I want to talk about how to drop giants. How to drop giants. I would encourage every child of God to study 
the life of David. Anything you see in the scripture about David, read it. David is an awesome character that will help you see a person who goes from nothing to becoming a mighty servant of God. He's a person, it's a, everything about his life is in there. His mountaintop experiences, Shell, he's got some victories, he's got some valleys, he's got some disappointments. Every now and then he's got some fears. One time he had to act crazy, but it's all in there. And in chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's a great, great chapter to experience another experience being a child of God. In chapter 17, I wanna, I'm gonna poke around it a minute, but I wanna tell you in there, John, we see how to drop a giant. Now there's a two-legged giant in 1 Samuel chapter 17, but that's not the only giants that we face. Tracy, if I'd been smart, I would have had you to pass a mic around, because I've had some giants, got one now, you got some giants. Can we do it like grandmama used to say it? All God's chilling. <laughs> All God's chilling got giants. Some of them are in the form of finance. Some of them are in the form of illness. Some in the form of a brand new season. Some of them in the form of people in your family you can't reach and break through. Some of them are in the form of grief. But everybody, we got some giants. But there's some principles that I've saw as I've been looking at this text for a little while that you can, you can drop your giant. We can learn it from, from Brother David today. Colin Powell said, whenever you see a war, it's the result of broken down diplomacy. Whenever you see people having to go to war, it's because people, that diplomacy have broken, have broken down. Because the truth is, we don't really want to fight. Sometimes you don't need to fight, but then sometimes, <laughs> thank you, Deborah. Deborah said, sometimes a man got to do, sometimes, sometimes a sister got to do, <laughs> sometimes a brother got to do. There are some giants that are worthy, they are worthy of fighting. David shows up in chapter 17 because he's on an assignment from his father. That's the only reason he came. He came to the place of war at the time of war, not to fight, but because he had three big brothers that were fighting. And Jesse sent David to bless not only the brothers, but he wanted to bless the commanders. Jesse, the father, wanted to bless the person over his sons. He wanted to bless the ones who had the say-so over where his sons would be in the battle. Sent him the best he had because what he was trying to do, David goes on an assignment indirectly, it's to provide assistance to the brother by blessing the commanders. The prayer is that the commanders would show favor on Jesse's son. And then when the word get back to the father, he's assured that somebody has their back. <laughs> I ain't got time to do that again, but it is an assignment because he's trying to assist, provide assistance to the son cause the father wants to make sure that the sons have somebody <laughs> that's got their back. 
Uh, and in this text, when David shows up, David sees something strange cause the battle hadn't started. It's been over a month and the battle still haven't started. Verse number 25 gives us my first teaching point. When David gets there, Goliath shows up and he been cussing for over 40 days. And uh, Mike Lucas, he's in Wisconsin now. He watches me every week. He's volunteered to be my cussing deacon. And he said, Pastor, whatever you need one, Mike, I need you to get ready. Call your friend Dwight, because it may, may take two of y'all to handle this one today. Uh, here it is, they, in the verse 25, listen to what the text says. They're speaking to David, and they say to David, do you see how this man keeps coming out to defy Israel? You see what he been, what he been doing. You see what he's been, what he's been saying. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna drop giants, people who drop giants need real good vision. They need real good vision. Put a comma right there. One of my favorite comedians is Michael Jr. You can look him up just like that. He's a preacher, he's a Christian, he is a comedian, but early in Michael Jr.'s life, he struggled to read. He did not have the benefit of learning the phonetic alphabet. He didn't go to Joshua Preschool where they learned the phonetic sounds and learned how to blend. And so he struggled. Arvana, he struggled all the way up till he was a teenager. And what, he, what, he, what it did was, it was a setback because he, he struggled to read, but it taught him to look at words differently. He said, I had to figure it out. I didn't know quite how the word sounds, so when I looked at a word, I looked at the fonts. I looked at where they were. I looked at what was before it. I looked at what was behind it. And it taught me I just have to look at things quickly and identify everything that I see. He said, I'm grown now and I can, I can, uh, I can read well, but it gave me, it trained me to look at things quickly and to look at things differently. I like, I like Michael Jr. because it gave me a little insight to teach me to, that you can see more than you really see when you hear what you hear. Listen to them. Ed, they said to David, do you see how this man keeps coming out? Do you see how he's defined the Lord God Israel? You need real good vision because here's what David really saw. It was the season for war. It was the place for war, but what no battle really going on. What nothing happening but a whole bunch of jawboning. What David saw was something in the words of Fanny Hamler, the word she would say, this is plum embarrassing. She'd say, this is plum embarrassing because what I see is a good case for two, at least two people to get a good whipping. There ought to be somebody that gets their narrow, right there, Mike, whipped in this text. The first one that needs a good whipping is Goliath because of, because of who he defies. Defy is a word that really means to uh, blaspheme. It's to, um, it's to disrespect. In essence, get ready Mike. In essence, Goliath is saying, yo God ain't, right there Mike. 
day after day they kept coming out he kept coming out saying y'all keep talking about worship y'all keep talking about Jehovah yo Jehovah ain't Jack right there and David sees somebody needs to the second the second the second good, good whipping ought to go to Israel the first one, Goliath needs to get whipped because of who he defies. Israel needs a whipping because of what they are denying. These folk, because of their lack of faith, are denying God a chance to show himself mighty and to show himself proud. Sometimes God puts us before a giant because he wants to fight the giant. But he can't fight the giant if the servant won't have faith. Uh -oh. You need good vision. David White, one of my mentors and friends, tells me this all the time. He says, Pastor, the more I study this, the more I see what I don't see. <laughs> That's why you just gotta keep on studying. Gotta keep on reading. Gotta keep on walking with God, cause the more God shows you, the more you see, the more you discover what you don't see. And when you know that you don't know, and sometimes you didn't even know that you didn't know, it ought to create a heart of humility. <laughs> Cause it's funny, the person who acts like they know it all and don't nobody know it all. Two weapons, one for Goliath because of what he, who he defies. One for Israel because of what they had denied. But the truth is sometimes God is looking for somebody who will act like the man. Every now and then God will raise up somebody who will be the man. The man or the woman. Every now and then God needs somebody that's just crazy enough to believe him. Somebody, some, every now and then, God needs somebody that's willing to walk out on the limb and trust God. No, let me do it like this. Every now and then, God needs somebody like Peter that's crazy enough to get out of a good boat into a, onto a sea in a storm, all because Jesus said, come on. Ain't it funny? After somebody who acts like the man or the woman with faith, then everybody else gets excited. But they wasn't doing nothing until somebody took a step. Could it be you? Could it be you? Could it be you? Look at me. <laughs> Could it be you? Could it be you that the crowd's waiting on to step out, to trust God? And they, they want to do it, but their faith ain't there yet. Could it? Because sometimes you just don't see what you don't see. But then when you see it, you need to file it for an experience to make you run a little harder. People who drop giants need good vision. People who drop giants need to be sober. Sober. Listen, Goliath is real. This is not a figment of his imagination. This dude is real. One of the things we dare not do 
is belittle the giants that all of us face. It's so funny how sometimes we come alongside, say, man, all you got to do is have faith. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? I just want to encourage you, slow your roll, because it's easy to say that when all your bills are paid and you got an emergency fund. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? It's good. To, it's easy for you to say that. You just got a good, clean bill of health. So I want to encourage you that this giant, he's real. The text is very clear. Not only is he, he he's real, but he's bigger than David. He's battle tested. He's a bully. When you look at him. You, you look at him and you look at David and you say, this is, this, this fight's already fixed. And, and Saul knew that he was, Goliath was bigger. Saul knew that he was battle tested. Saul knew that he was an arrogant bully. But Saul didn't know what David knew. Don't underestimate the giant. He is big. He is a bad boy. He has killed a lot of folk. He is the MVP. And he can hurt you. So be sober. But that's not how the story has to end. Let me shift and transition like this. Um, I went to USI's game a week or so ago, and on the first night of the, of the playoffs, everybody was warming up, and uh, it was one of the first times the teens had, had to, got a chance to play in a while, and uh, everybody was dunking in the warm-ups. They, they, they cocking it and dunking and reverse and all of that kind of stuff. Even the little guard, he's dunking. The, the opponent, the opponent, everybody was dunking, and I looked at my granddaughter, they were kind of, ooh, ah. Oh. People in the crowd, ooh. Oh, but I've, I've been around this thing a minute, but nobody guarding them. <laughs> you ought to be able to do it. You're 10 feet tall. Ain't nobody guarding you. You got two good knees. <laughs> Seven foot, six, nine, six, ten. They were bigger than us, had greater wingspan than us. They were jumping out of the gym, but the game ain't even started. I liked what the coach said on Last Chance University. It's a, it's a Netflix show I'm not recommending. You, 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 you watch it, I, I watched a couple, and he was telling this team in the playoffs, he said, yeah, they're bigger than us. In, in many positions, they're better than us but we can still beat them. Here's the truth. Just cause they're big don't mean they can't fall. Just cause they beat other folk, that don't mean he can beat you. Just because they talking big, cause talking's one thing. Putting it into action, it's a whole nother story. I'm just about done. If you're going to drop giants, you need to be able to see. If you're going to drop giants, you need to be able, you need to be sober. Don't belittle the giant that's standing in your way. But David was able to drop the giant because he done settled some things. If you're going to drop giants, you have to be settled. Matter of fact, let me do it like this, Junior. It helps to have some settled convictions. 
David had settled some things. There's some things that he's got in his mind that he ain't gonna let nobody, nobody change. Watch this, Trudy. In the 37th verse, David, after uh, being attacked by his brothers, they attacked his motives, they attacked his management because he didn't left the sheep, they attacked his manhood, they said, you just here to watch the fight. Dave, David, David didn't let that bother him, but he, but he spoke with confidence and the word got to Saul. And Saul invited him in and Saul said, you can't do it, that was one conversation. David said in verse number 37, listen to David's response to the king who was at home. Another sermon, another day. The Lord rescued me from another situation. Not just once, twice. The Lord rescued me. Now when he uses the word rescue, David has a spirit of humility because he's got sense enough to know no normal, no man on any given day can beat a big old bear or a big old lion. But he said, he told the whole truth, the Lord. <laughs> he rescued me. He's got some convictions. The Lord rescued me then, and listen to this, and he will rescue me. I know he's bigger. I know he's badder. I know he's battle tested, but the Lord rescued me and the Lord will rescue, rescue me. Now, Trudy, here's what I wanted to show you. When did the Lord rescue him? Watch this. I got to go to second gear. <clears throat> he says this in chapter 17 as a testimony. But it happened prior to chapter 16. Stay with me, I'm on my way somewhere. In chapter 16, he was anointed. But he got rescued before chapter 16. Come on, come on. He, he got rescued somewhere before chapter 16. Now, here's his settled convictions. If God rescued me in chapter, before chapter 15, he rescued me so I'd be alive to be anointed in chapter 16. And if he anointed me in chapter 16, he's got to keep me in chapter 17 because I've yet to fulfill what he's anointed me to do. Here's how I know I'm going to get through this because I've been, there is an anointing on my life and I haven't sat on the throne yet. He's promised I got the appointment. I just don't have the date yet. I've got the position. I just haven't been placed yet. If he kept me in chapter 15 and anoints me in chapter 16, somehow, some way, he's gonna keep me in chapter 17 because he's got an anointing on my life. I'm trying to help somebody today. Listen, number one, here's how I know you are gonna get through this. There's an anointing on your life. I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through, but you're going to get through this because there's an anointing on your life. God has more in store for you. This can't 
take you down because you've yet to accomplish what God has called you to do. I wrap it up like this. It's not God and me. John, it's not God and me. If I said it was God and me, it would sound like God came along to help me or I came along to help God. Mother, here's how you're gonna drop that giant. It's not God and you, it's God in you you makes all the difference sister Johnson God in you is gonna make all the difference go on home and tell your story because it's God in you that makes the difference how we gonna make it how we gonna take it God in me and greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world greater is he that's in me than he Praise the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate the word of God today. Come on, somebody tell God, thank you for your word today. Does anybody feel better as a result of hearing the word of God? Can you see things clearer as a result of hearing the word of God? Have your burdens got lighter as a result of hearing the word of God? Come on, let's bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Praise God. God bless you, Pastor Rasco. I don't know about you, but I've been helped by the word of God today. And giants do fall. They do fall. And God has blessed us and allowed us to, to overcome some enemies and win some battles. But we've got to remember that it was him and not us. Have you ever faced a battle that you knew you couldn't win? You went into it knowing you, you, couldn't, you couldn't win this. But I, I, I love, I love, to, I love to hear Trudy say, but oh, don't we have a God. <laughs> don't we have a God who is able to take down the biggest of giants. We have a God who's able to heal the greatest of sicknesses. We have a God who's on our side and he loves us and he cares for us. I bet if I pass the mic around right now, there'd be a room full of testimonies about the goodness of our God. And we got to be just like David. We got to be willing to say, no, that's my God. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to curse at my God. You're not going to talk about, sometimes we got to stand up to some giants and remind them of who our God is and who we are in him. Amen. And so today we come to, to offer to you the opportunity to have a relationship with this great and awesome God. Let me tell you, he loves you so much. And he didn't just talk about love, but God decided to demonstrate love. And the Bible says that, that while we were yet sinners, while we were enemies of God, that he sent his son Jesus to die that we might have a relationship with him. 
And you know what? It's really simple. We try to, we try to make it complicated, but, but it's really simple. The Bible says that if we can just believe in our hearts, confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, the Bible said you shall be saved as a result of hearing and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you can just believe it today by faith and confess it, you can be saved. You don't have to walk away from this broadcast the same way you were when you started watching, but you can walk away having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we offer Christ to you, my sister, my brother, wherever you are. If you hear the Lord knocking at the door of your heart, we urge you to let him in. Be the best decision you ever make is to allow the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and take residence in your heart. Amen. And if you have believed that, and if you have confessed that, and you have invited the Lord Jesus into your heart, let us know. We want to hear from you, and we want to welcome you to the family of God. Amen. Again, to God be the glory for the things he has, he has done. You all, it's time for the offering. We praise the Lord. We thank God for the opportunity to give. Amen. Thank God for first giving to us, and now we bring back to him our tithes, our offering. Um, we owe God our tithes, and we come to give him an offering to show our appreciation for what he's done and for who he is in our lives. Amen. So there are, there are several convenient ways of giving. Remember, the, um, there's uh, PayPal, Givelify. You can uh, mail in your offerings. And uh, we even have a drop box here at the church where you can drop them off. If you're here in the building today and you want to give, um, the offering boxes are at the exits on, on the, the left and the right hand side. And so you can give on your way on your way out amen and we do all we do want to thank you all for for following the rules today and for practicing social distancing and and wearing your mask and everything so we say to god be to god be the glory um also i'd like to share uh some prayer requests that we have this morning and Resta, can you give me my phone right here because I may not remember them all. But we do want to remember Brother Michael Jordan in prayer. He's going to be traveling, traveling this week, and he asks that we remember him in, in prayer as he, as he travels. Amen. Um, Sister Amy DeVries is requesting prayer. Uh, Brother Michael Coleman. Michael's having some health challenges, and he's asking the saints of God to pray for him. Uh, Brother David Snaden's mother-in-law in Florida will be having open-heart surgery. Brother Robert Futrell, Deacon Donald Cheney, Mother Jacqueline Barnes, Brother Mark Barnes, Deacon John Bush, Brother Ike Collins, Mother Virginia Johnson, who is the mother of Mother Clara Jackson. And um, I'm, that's all that I have at this time. So we encourage you all each week to please send in your prayer requests. And uh, we want to pray for you and with you. Okay. Okay, Brother Dwan Redding, Redding went to the emergency room. So we'll remember him in our prayers. Is there any other requests from anybody here? in the building. Okay, Ed and Chastity Hendricks. And Mother Esther Taylor is requesting prayer for her brother. Okay. And we're still praying for, for you, Nashera, and Darlene, and your entire family. 
They celebrated the home going of Neshera's mother on yesterday. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna pray and receive our benediction. God, we want to say thank you. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the word we heard today, God. Father, we pray that you grant us the wisdom we need in order to apply your word to our lives, dear God. God, we pray that you bless us throughout this week, God. Help us to walk in victory. Help us to be victorious through everything we may face this week, God. And we'll give you the glory. And we'll give you the honor. God, for every name that has been called today, we lift them up to you, God. Father, where there's sickness, we pray for your healing. Where there's confusion, we pray for peace, God. Where there's brokenness, God, we pray for healing. Whatever the situation is, God, we cast our every care on you because we know that you care for us. And so, God, we just, we just lift up every one of these prayer concerns, God. And we're trusting you to work them out for our good, God. And, God, I believe by faith that you're already moving, that you're already working. And so, God, we're going to say thank you. God, for those that have come today to worship, we thank you, God, and we just pray that you will continue to bless and keep them, God. We thank you, Father, for, for just speaking to us today, God. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, to our minds, and to our spirits, dear God. We say thank you, and we honor you, God. Pray that you bless us throughout this week. Grant us opportunities to share the love of Christ with someone who may not know you. God, pray that you bless our going out and our coming in. And it's in Jesus' name we pray with a heart full of thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you all, and thank you for joining us for worship here at the Nazarene Baptist Church of Evansville.